Hello, hello everybody. This is Ashavri, your community manager for Skyweaver, and we're here today for some really awesome patch notes that we're gonna go over with all of you. So why don't we begin? <laughs> um, I'm gonna go through this one. This one's Unstoppable Dragons, patch number 67. So it's a really exciting patch today. There's a lot going on. And um, it's, it's the first where the design team was able to implement changes based on new and improved meta and card data, which is cool. So expect a lot of tweaks that restore some long lost functionality to cards that may revitalize a diabolical old strategy. So let's see what there is to uncover. All right. So let's move into this. Hello, people who are watching the post stream VOD. <laughs> okay funny um okay cool so balance patch number 67 here is some of the new features that we're gonna go over okay so first and foremost hovering over your grave will now show a preview of the top card who is excited for this this is awesome like i am so happy about this change because this just makes it so much easier when you're like wait what just died um what got sent to the grave you know what i mean so this is a really really cool change that we have here um <laughs> Shh, don't tell anyone where it's okay <laughs> so if the client runs into a problem it'll show an error message so that you know something went wrong and you can send a screenshot to beta bugs on discord to help us fix it Clicking or tapping a card in the deck and graveyard sidebars now opens a full screen preview. So this is gonna be pretty clutch. We're excited for the new features. Let's go. Um, moving on to some improvements over here. So we've clarified the requirements to rank up when you click the little eye icon next to ranks on your profile, the little info icon. Um, so now it's gonna be a lot clearer. Everything's more updated. Um, another improvement is when Sapphire doubles a trigger, the doubled unit's trigger indicator will flash twice. Also, the cards in your deck in game are now sorted alphabetically after they're sorted by cost to ensure that there's always a consistent order. So that way, like, yes, it's still sorted by cost first, but then at least you'll be able to read it with more ease um, with the alphabetical within that. So cool. Um, I'm just going to read some of the comments right now. <laughs> Sapphire visual buff. Get your die ready. <laughs> yes, precisely. Um, so now let's go into some of the bug fixes. And please note, like, we're always working on patches. There will be probably even more in the upcoming um, next couple of patches and stuff. So for this week, these are the patch... The patches the bug fixes that we are tending to so we fixed two minor game freezes related to reconnection so hopefully that won't be a problem anymore we fixed a major bug where reconnecting while your opponent was playing moves could cause all the cards in game to duplicate disappear or simply freeze the client but please keep the reconnection bugs reports coming because like it does really help us a lot to figure out what's going on um in the beta bugs channel and discord or you can dm me you can reach out on social like you can use the little feedback button in gate like you can do all of the things um to let us know it really does help us a lot to always improve this so just wanted to let you know also we fixed card mouse over previews in the deck and graveyard being positioned incorrectly so that's a good one um we We've also fixed mouse over previews in the deck and graveyard, not including attachments on units. We fixed a bug where Sapphire was firing the inspire triggers of a unit that was summoned by a spell when that unit's inspire trigger would fire when that spell was played. Um, did you understand what I just said? I'm gonna repeat it slowly, okay? I'm sorry if I'm going too fast. We fixed a bug where Sapphire was firing the inspire triggers of a unit that was summoned by a spell when that unit's inspired trigger would fire when that spell was played. I hope that I hope that makes sense. D does that make sense, everybody? Did I say it right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so if you can say it like ten times really fast, like shout out to you, you're doing great. Um, a, a third time? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm gonna move on now. I think we're good. If I did it a third time, I'd have to be like 
Pixie bug with stuff I was buying the pr- I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. I can't. I actually just stumbled there, so it's not happening. Um, so moving on to the next one. <laughs> um, we fixed the missing title bar on the Get Conquest tickets page. So no confusion there anymore. We got you covered. And we also fixed a bug where viewing players' profiles would show your Conquest stats. That's, yeah, that was a very important one. Thank you for your reports, of course. We really, really appreciate it. And we've also fixed a bug where emote bubbles could appear over the match end screen. So that should no longer be an issue as well. But yep, that's all for this week. And keep the reports coming and stuff that you've already reported or you may have noticed might be an issue before and you want to report it again, please check known issues first in our Discord channel because sometimes we do have a note Um, addressing those issues already and we're aware of it but yeah keep it coming we love having the feedback and we love that you're also thorough with it with all the screenshots and detailed information like it it's great so thank you so much for testing us in this final testing phase literally so moving on now to the next part we are gonna talk about the balance changes so welcome Coulter (laughs) Hooray! Yeah, this is very exciting. Uh, Very exciting patch, because as mentioned, a lot of this is data-driven this time, because we got some better data, thanks to our amazing data analyst, Tim Small. Um, And it allowed me to better pinpoint how and where certain prisms and cards were overperforming or underperforming. So massive thanks. We also have a few tweaks centered around cleaning up a few cards that had really long effects, which made them hard to read on mobile. Uh, Something we found out that traits like Lifesteal or Wither really compress card text. So a few cards had to drop some traits or have their text edited just to make the text consistent. This wasn't something that was super fun to do, but it allowed for some fun sort of redesigns or tweaks to certain cards. So it was all in all not a bad thing to happen. Realistically, like we should have planned from the beginning around the text size. Um, so I was just uh, doing cleaning up some basically... Uh, Doing, <laughs> paying some tax for not doing that sooner by cleaning up a few card texts. Um, cool. So, yeah. Let's get into it, then. I'm yeah, gonna jump right in. There's start, plenty of cool things yeah. this week. Let's start with Chomp. I'm going to do my best not to reveal the next one, <laughs> just yeah. in case. But it's it's proving a little difficult. So if I, if I mess up, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, go for it, Coulter. You don't have to worry so much about it, Chomp. Um, so Chomp, uh, this is a fairly simple change. Chomp, in order to reformat its text, uh, now says target unit instead of target enemy unit. So you can pulverize your own fungi and use the overflow damage to hit the enemy hero in the face. So you can chomp through your own units to bite down on the enemy hero and kill them. Cool. So yeah, it's, uh, uh, it's a fun little change. I don't think it'll make a huge difference, but it can lead to some funny lethals. So it's, it's, it's nice. Mm-hmm. It's a cute change. All right. Ooh, sick burn change. Okay, let's have it closer. What was the the logic behind this one? Whoops. This is another one where the text was really compressed, so we dropped the keyword here, but we buffed it in another way. It now discards the leftmost unit in hand, so it prioritizes discarding units um, over spells, which Hart really likes. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm much louder than the Shavery. Well, that's just kind of me. I will fix it a bit. No worries, though. It's, it's I'm just naturally time. loud. <laughs> I frequently start like raising my voice higher and higher in a conversation without really. But yeah, it's it's a pretty cool card. Um, it won't discard spells, so it's more reliable. Yeah. Cool. Should be pretty cool. Awesome. Um, hopefully it's not too busted, but we've got some cool changes. Uh, this is one that I wasn't too happy to have to make, but with the trait, there was no way for Light Ranger's text to be above like four point font. So we had to drop Lifesteal off him uh, to make his text work. But he got a slightly bulkier body, so that um, that sort of evens out a bit, mm-hmm. I would think. Mm-hmm. Maybe he could be a 3-6. That'd be cool. I don't think we have a 4-mana 3-6. But I'll keep looking at it. I was looking, like, if we word it, can he, like, somehow give himself Lifesteal as part of the effect or something? So... It's a bit yeah. of a toss-up. I didn't really want to drop Lifesteal, but in order to make the text work and be visible for mobile, we needed to make a little sacrifice here. Ooh, goodbye, Light Ranger. Aw, poor Light Ranger. <laughs> I thought about making it so he draws the highest cost spell, which would be unique, but it would probably mean that you just run no light spells to instantly hit Cause Wrath every time. Mm-hmm. 
All right. Yep. Pudo. Ooh, we got a change to Pudo over here. Let's see. What have you got for us? Yeah, so Pudo picked up what Light Ranger lost, basically. Pudo gained lifesteal when Light Ranger lost it. Nice. Yeah. That's actually really strong on Pudo. Yeah, like, wow. Pudo has a kind awesome. of weak stat line, though, and Wither isn't that plentiful, actually. I was actually looking at keywords, and Wither's only on, like, 80 cards or something, whereas, like, Stealth Ooh. is on 129, which is pretty impressive considering that Wither can be on spells and units, and Stealth can only really be... Well, there's some spells that give Stealth, too, but, like, in mm -hmm. terms of the keyword, Stealth is far more plentiful. So this is awesome. This is really awesome. I'm excited to play this. Yeah, Mono Strength is going to be over the moon. Like, this is cool. All right. Oh, Hot Dog. We got to change to the dog. The main, the main dog. The main yeah, doggo. so this was a bit of a nerf to Agility. Agility, actually, according to the new stats, was, like, so far ahead of other prisms. Its win rates are, like... Just massively out in front, basically. <laughs> uh, so this was a change I made to a few of them where I substituted Banner for a plus one power boost on the unit, which makes the removal ability of the card, it still pushes the same damage, but it makes it less flexible because you can't use your hero as effectively to help clean up things. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Ufrat here throwing shade. <laughs> Ufrat yeah, says. I wasn't sure. it, it was interesting. To, the new data really did help point out some stuff. Namely, that Wisdom has like no cards with above 50% win rate. And uh, when using filters, uh, none of the Wisdom cards showed up in like the top 300 most played eight mm -hmm. cards. Which mm -hmm. just, if you people want wisdom to be nerfed what you need to do is actually play wisdom to the point where i can where the data actually shows meaningful numbers about wisdom <laughs> yes yes thank <laughs> you i can't data make wizard. good judgment calls on wisdom cards other than hmm, they all seem to be bad because no one plays them <laughs> it's hard to make judgment calls when there's no data no this is this is good nice nice bad nerf over here i think this is a solid change Again, this was also driven by the fact that hot dog's text was minuscule due to having a trait coupled with incredibly long text yeah fair enough i have an idea for some tweaks that could bring banner back in the future uh once there's some mechanical futzing in the future but that'll that's mm -hmm. a ways off so yeah cool so ghost duster colter what'd you do to ghost duster i'm scared <laughs> no i'm kidding all right oh, sorry Claudio. i didn't mean to be rude <laughs> I'm just saying, like, I, I want to try to do my best for you guys always, but if if no one's playing Wisdom, it's hard for me to tell what Wisdom cards need nerfs or tweaks because it's hard to see standouts. Like, Orchid was the most played Wisdom card, but it had, like, a 40% win rate. <laughs> it, was like, it was the most played, but also not actually the best Wisdom card, so... <laughs> Don't okay. worry. Thanks. Blood Heal loves you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right so, tell us about uh, ghost duster no more yeah, armor it was here another one where the text was really compressed so i dropped armor here uh to make it a little weaker like uh, int had tons of armor one drop so dropping it here seems okay mm -hmm. and it also its effect is actually better now people were saying why can't we have it where it gets the lowest cost it's like well there just wasn't enough text real estate but now that it has more text real estate because it no longer has armor uh what card was most played in wisdom uh orchid Orchid was most played, according to the data we have. But it wasn't the highest win rate. I'm not sure what the highest win rate was, to be honest. Cool. I was, like, surprised that certain cards like Whelm, which people always say are real, like, killer cards, had, like, a 24% win rate or something. Like, absolutely abysmal. <laughs> so it was very interesting. Super enlightening to see all that data. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you for the yeah. follow. Really appreciate it. Yeah, we'll have to see. Duster still seems... Pretty Shout strong. Out I was to concerned. You, cardboard it, Monka. Sorry, go on. <laughs> making it like a one two, but I thought that'd be too harsh of a nerf all at once. But I do want to tone down one drops to make two drops, three drops, four drops more valuable for aggro. It means that the like super rush strategies. So we've been tuning down one cost units so they're not all strictly better than mm -hmm. claw bear. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> nice. No, that's good. It's a good change. Ooh, angler. All right. What happened to angler? Ooh, tell us about this change, yeah. Coulter. Yeah, this is a pretty wacky change, but I think it's pretty it's pretty fun. It feels very int. The card has a lot of moving parts in it. Um, so basically, it lost stealth and it lost one power, making it weaker as an int unit. So it has a kind of bad stat pool, but it gained mana potion. 
So what happens is it'll draw its lowest cost water spell, but unless your mana is empty, it will overwrite its own mana potion via placing the spell on itself. But if you play it exactly on, and you have no mana left, you'll get to keep the potion and the spell will go to your hand. So you can use the potion to play the spell if it's a one cost spell, for like effectively netting one mana, or you can use it to play another one drop. So I actually think in a weird way, this is like... Wow. Um... Potentially a lot stronger, <laughs> ironically. So we'll have to watch how it goes. This is Just big thinking big. about it, it's like kind of like it's like a one mana one two that draws you a card if you play it right, and then you can play the potion and play like another one drop. So yeah, I think it's pretty nutty. It'll be very exciting to see how this works. Yeah, this is They're, really cool. very neat. It's a very tactical card. There's like three things going on here, but it's also kind of it's not super hard to understand what's happening, and it also sort of serves as a way to show how overwrite works to people. Mm -hmm. So I think it's pretty neat. It's a very kind of inty design. Very, very cool change here. Yeah, this is wild. This is big brain, as Philippe was saying. Mm -hmm. This is very wild, very cool, very interesting. Um, and I also liked what Worf, Worf was saying er earlier. It's like tried and true, but stranger. <laughs> That's kind of yeah. cool. All right, let's move on to the next one then. So Carrion Crow. Um, oh, Crow, Crow. <laughs> I'm so sorry for pronouncing it that way. <laughs> Carry and Crow. <laughs> Colton, tell us about this change. Carry and Crow. <laughs> uh, yeah, Carry and Crow is a pretty cool one. Um, it just kind of, its text again was shortened down via not needing to eat a dead enemy unit anymore to gain a spell. Um, which is... A buff, like Just Dad Bacon was saying, but at the same time, Carrion Crow was really not played much. And I think it's because, like, the lowest cost dark spell in Heart is Dark Rune, which is not the greatest card in the world. So, Car so this feels like a nice buff. Although it is a bit of a nerf, because sometimes you'd want to eat your opponent's Phoenix or something mm -hmm. with uh, Crow. Oh my gosh. I'm just imagining, like, a crow eating a Phoenix, and I'm like, whoa. <laughs> well, the idea is that Carrion Crow is, like, <laughs> a corpse trader or something he trades oh like gosh. in in like well that's that's a kind of dark but he trades in like secrets and <laughs> lore and stuff oh that's so cool oh that would be such a cool story oh so, man kind of like a grave robbery thing he collects dead things i love that he... oh man that's actually really really cool can do a lot with that in the phoenix plume you know? honestly the name might be tweaked though because carrion crow made more sense when he like dusted everything from graveyards when he was played he used to have an effect where he would like blow up the lowest cost creatures in graves <laughs> but he got changed to be our dark spell seeker later <laughs> Uh, carrion corvo <laughs> like that would be kind of cool too no i love this that's cool we'll call it corvo crow so it's like it's like uh it's it's like chai tea it's just crow, crow. oh no no colton no we can't do the chai we'll call tea it corvo thing crow. no <laughs> that it's would like be terrible man bread or chai tea or stuff no. like that it's just the word twice <laughs> in different ways me and moon in the chat are like <laughs> oh my god that'd be so funny but like no <laughs> Okay, so Dark Adept over here. Dark Adept, oh my gosh. I can't I can't say words today, people. I'm sorry. So it went from Wither to Lifesteal and a new text effect. Tell us what you changed here and why. Yeah, again, this was a, this, his old effect was just so messy the way it had to be phrased. When another ally unit dies, gain plus one health and draw an attached to Dark Spell this unit. Like the gain plus one health refers to Dark Adept, but it was also like the confusing, it was confusing because if, in like a game like Magix, an effect worded like that, gain one life, would mean the player. It would implicitly mean you mm -hmm. when it was phrased like that. Mm -hmm. So it was just a little confusing. Um, this is a far more potent version, in my opinion, but it also doesn't just gain a million HP and never die. So mm -hmm. it's kind of easier to clean up, but it has a little more healing. Um, it's kind of bad with Grave Royal or whatever. <laughs> It'll draw <laughs> Grave Royal and then die. So again, it's still probably kind of awkward to use in Heart, but uh, I like it. I think that this kind of cool. when things die, get benefits uh, Heart effect is pretty cool. I could yeah. also see upping it to a 2-5 and not giving the minus one cost because minus one cost on Dark Spell on any spell is very powerful. Mm -hmm. So yeah, That's it seems true. pretty cool though. If you couple it with something like, yeah, some, it would be great in Agility. You play it, you crash in with a unit in like hard agility and draw your uh, grim reprisal and then blow up another enemy unit and then draw a dark rune after trading in another unit i could see yeah. some real potential with like low cost dark spells and an agility 
Yeah, for sure. For some kind of aggro, which would be cool because hard agility as a deck really isn't seen at all. So that's true. No, this is this is a cool change. I think it'll be fun, especially in like you're saying and like Blood Heel was saying, Agi Heart. Yes, mm -hmm. definitely slept on. I totally agree. All right, mm -hmm. Vlad, the lovely Vlad over here. Ooh, got less health. All right, tell tell us why. Okay. It's just a revert. Every time last week, everyone kind of clowned on me for <laughs> because they're like, "This game seems, though, seems unneeded," and it it kind of was with agility doing as well as it was. So I just decided to revert this after seeing how well agility was doing, and Wait. that Vlad was like one of the five most played cards. That's so funny. I think funny. it'll still be good. Everyone's but, like, "No!" <laughs> and it's still an auto include card. Blood heal says. I mean, I like that there are powerful five cost agility cards because there used to not be <laughs> the best agility deck used to mm -hmm. cap at like four. And even then that was one card. Mm -hmm. So true, yeah. true. definitely a very I good like way. That there are flexible, higher cost agility cards. I want to move the game so that aggro is incentivized to run a wider range of things. Cool. So now we have Trailblazer over here which only has stealth now. <gasps> no more lifesteal. Tell us why, yeah. Coulter. Tell us why. <laughs> Come on. Big it's a, um, Big it's reaction. Yeah, so I like, agility's been doing well, but one thing I wanted to emphasize a bit was agility not being as good as he, at healing. So I wanted to um, just tone down its healing a bit more to make it... Uh, a little riskier with its own health because that's a mechanic I like. Um, yeah, it already sucked at healing, but the point is that it should be riskier for it to heal. I think that like aggro, like the top of the leaderboard is all dominated by aggro right now, and the stats pretty much reflect that that fact. So I just want to tune down a number of I tuned down a bunch of agility cards again, not totally gutting them, but just making them a little awkwarder. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't. What, what Nothing happened? happened to Cube Junior. <laughs> Cube Junior is like one piece of healing agility gets because it ties into its central theme. All right. So now we're going to move on to Hannah. And the change here was going from Glory add to Vile Vile to the enemy deck to Glory add Vile Vile to the enemy deck. It's just like a text change. Or am I blind? <laughs> yeah, it, just, it, it no longer pollutes the enemy deck as aggressively. Mm -hmm. It only adds one vial to mm -hmm. their deck. So oh. it's just a small nerf. I think Hannah should honestly still probably be fairly strong because you mostly run it for the good body, the stealth, and the um, vile vial on it. Yeah, nice. Definitely very fair. Definitely very fair. All right, mm -hmm. so now Imposter. <gasps> Imposter doesn't have stealth anymore. Wow. All right, tell us about this one. Uh, this one is a little bit of a nerf again. Imposter was a very highly rated agility card in the stats. Um, and I wanted to tweak it because I always felt it was a tiny bit weird that it started with stealth. Um, specifically because its whole deal is uh, stealing abilities. So it can still steal stealth from enemy units. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> anything left unnerfed in agility? I think we have a few more. Um yeah, so it can still steal traits, it can still steal stealth, but now it doesn't um, just start with stealth. And, I mean, we'll see how it goes. If agility totally drops off the face of the earth after this patch, then we can revert some of these. But unlike what happened with Heart when I nerfed the mummies, I kind of don't think that's going to happen. By the way, Raise Arms is still the highest win rate card in all of Heart at, like, 60% win wow. rate. Wow! Oh my gosh! Wow! No, that's super cool to Raise know. Arms is still incredibly strong, as it turns Raise out. Arms. which. The fact that it's sitting there likely just kind of shows how strong aggro is right now and how important raise arms. That's awesome. Is. Yeah, Imposter's really good when it hits armor, and if it hits stealth, it can unstealth things, and if it hits banner, it's very powerful. Like, I think Imposter will still be pretty good. Cool. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All good. Yeah, I, I need to just not really defend myself. It's it. It's not really necessary. Not because I don't care about your opinions, but just it's not. Yeah, <laughs> it's no. Like... You, you in Coulter, we trust always. <laughs> am I right? Am I right? I I know it. I am. It's, it's all good. Yeah. Moving on. And to if the meta changes a bit, and like Blood Heel saying the agility. If, oh, uh, this is the one where Bacon's gonna kill me. Uh oh. <laughs> all right, we're this here. We're bacon. here. We're just gonna hit it. We're just gonna hit it. All right, run wild. Tell us, yeah. Coulter. Just, just. 
this is again like the hot dog again this is one of the highest win rate cards um in all of agility um <laughs> bacon's currently driving to my house so. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah so run wild again it's similar to the nerf to hot dog where it still pushes the same amount of damage it can potentially even push more damage um in the event that the unit sticks um but it no lot it trades banner for plus one power <laughs> on the unit uh bacon is at the shed looking for a baseball bat yeah uh i said possibly contentious change here but yeah it just sort of it dilutes sort of the effectiveness of it as removal by reducing a bit of hero banner but i mean look on the positive side people are saying everything dies to banner but now we've removed some of the banners so not everything dies to banner as fast mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> i also changed the text for if your hand has fire because i always thought that was a little strange um to be perfectly honest. No. Cause, so I have it, if your hand has a fire card. Oh yeah, I see what people are saying. Though. If your hand has fire, a fire card, ready it. Yeah, I could change it to ready it if your hand has a fire card, but usually this was following the traditional um, text formatting where you go condition effect. But yeah, mm -hmm. I can see what people are potentially saying. Oh yeah, um, it's like, yeah, like, re yeah, I understand. <laughs> Yeah, ready it, the unit that was summoned, not the fire card. I mean, before it sounded like it readied your whole hand. If your hand has fire, ready it. So. Yeah. Cool. Um, okay, so um, moving on down. Bacon, are you good over there? Are you good? I hope everything's all as well. <laughs> Hang in there. We're going to go to the next one. Um, it's Blitz. So Blitz went from basically return your hand to deck, draw three, to return your hand to deck, draw, draw three, and do three damage to your hero. Um, tell us why this changed, Coulter. I really like this theming for agility in that um, certain cards will cause injury to its hero. <laughs> um, I don't think this is that serious, unless you're in, like, aggro mirrors. If you're still the aggressor, I don't think you mind taking three damage that much, probably. But, um... I think that it's a pretty interesting change. Um, Blitz was a card for a long time that I was a little worried about. Um, uh, I was a little worried about it overall, mm -hmm. uh, just because it was such efficient draw. So I just wanted to add this to make it a little riskier so your hero takes a bit of an injury from it. Cool. All right. Awesome. So let's move on to the next one then. Um, Axolotl, Axolotl, what happened to Axolotl? We have given it one less health. Why have we nerfed Axolotl, Coulter? What was the um, It was one of the really high run rate strength cards. Um, and I, like I said here, uh, for most one cost units, losing one HP would be a massive nerf, but since Axolotl would routinely hit five to seven HP, I think he'll be okay hitting four to six instead now. <laughs> Cause cool. he, he just got so huge, uh, so easily that yeah. I don't think this will really wreck Axolotl. It'll yeah, make him true. die one turn sooner, but he already lived for like four friggin' turns on average because he had a million hit points, so. Yeah. <laughs> it's not like <laughs> Axolotl lost banner. Yeah. <laughs> it's it would be like a, zero, a one mana zero five with banner most of the time, probably. Yeah, that's true, that's true. Yeah. No, good point. Crystal Cash. You know what? I just realized I don't think I've ever played with this card in my deck. <laughs> Somehow. It just never yeah. happened. Um, so, so I was looking yeah. at Strength. Strength and Agility had the highest win rates, and Int did to some degree as well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, again, this was stats-driven. Like, I was actually looking through here just to... I, I promise I won't uh, say anything else in sort of my defense after this, but I was looking, like, it's it's mostly stats-driven, a lot of these changes. Like, Banjo as a deck has, like, a 48% win rate, and Strength um, Agility decks on average have, like, a 70% win rate. So, like, I'm just going off of data here. Like, mm -hmm. a lot of this was data-driven as much as it was, like, stats-driven. Like, it was Strength and Agility that were punching way above the above where they were expected to be. And intellect was also, and I toned down certain, a few intellect cards, and I didn't want to change everything at once. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's just sort of an explanation where these things come from. Crystal cool. Cash, I noticed that some of the highest win rate strength cards were actually metal cards like Geod. And so I wanted to tweak Cash 
Um, it's not even a straight nerf. Um, it now pulls two different cards. It gets a spell and a unit, mm -hmm. which just means that you can't turbo out units as quickly with it. So yeah. you can't get like two units and make it, and then next turn explode onto the board. Cool. Yeah, really great. No, we have, it, it's fairly different. We have lots of different ways separated. I was looking at constructed win rates and I was amazed. Agility was really high. <laughs> that was the thing, so. Cool. Cool. So let's move on down to Pandora's change. So basically she went from having two power to three power and health from three to two. Um, why the reason for yeah. this tweak? Just to make her a little easier to clean up um, because she's very powerful when played on uh, an empty board. And again, it was another really high ranking card. Mm -hmm. Cool. Totally fine change. She's a little squishy, but that's okay. I think I think her sunset effect is really valuable still. And, you know, with the extra power she can hit, she can hit. All right, so now we're going to go to Grim Reprisal. Ooh! Okay, so no more traits on Grim Reprisal. And tell us about this one, Coulter. <laughs> Literally, why in the world? Well, let's see if let's see if this is true. <laughs> let's see if this is true. I suspect that with the come next patch, agility will still be very popular. So, <laughs> um, but let's see. Uh, yeah, so this is still, in my opinion, fairly strong. Uh, one mana to deal three damage to a unit is only really rivaled by strength's option, which is uh, strike down, mm -hmm. which requires you to have a unit in play. Mm -hmm. Uh, for it to work so i wanted to test this nerf of it not having wither and see <laughs> see how it goes no. uh and it allows it to push through uh defensive cards uh really easily so i wanted to make yeah, this tweak true nice. see how it goes. cool let's see how it goes for sure miss aya all right Ooh, what's going on here so now she has one extra point of health one less power and now she also has a lifesteal <sighs> My mind is blown. Okay, Coulter, tell us about the Messiah change. We need the tea. We need the Yeah, tea. I heard some feedback, and I honestly think this is one card that um, is particularly... Uh, it was particularly weak. It's fallen off in the meta. Mm -hmm. um, it's, fall it's fallen off in the meta because... Uh, it was just a bit slow, so I made it a little bulkier, so it's more likely to survive for a turn. Um, <laughs> Miss and not, not die. <laughs> uh, and Lifesteal felt appropriate since her effect centers around healing and stuff like that. <laughs> I don't think she's still that great. A 2-5 for 4 mana, even with Banner, is kind of low tempo, but it should be uh, a little more interesting. Yeah, definitely more interesting. I'm looking forward to it. I actually really enjoy playing Earth decks, so... I think it'll be pretty fun um, to see where this yeah. takes me. I, I love it. So, Cloud Kid. Hey, Cloud Kid. Um, I don't know why I'm talking to the card like it's a real person. But, <laughs> it's very cute. It's easy to <laughs> empathize with Cloud Kid. Yeah. So, no more... Did you want to say anything about this one with the no more yeah, stealth? Yeah, no more stealth. Just nerfing Cloud Kid because it's, again, one of the drops that's, like, really strong. So, I just wanted to tune it down. Cool. Okay. So, then let's move on to the next one, which is Nettle. So cute. I really like this artwork. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, oh, okay. So we removed stealth from Nettle and reduced the power, but increased the health. Tell us about this one, this tweak here. Uh, yeah. So this is a, uh, a little buff to a defensive tool, um, giving it, just trading its stealth and it one point of attack um, to make its health bigger. So it's more likely to survive and it works well nicely with its spell. So yeah, I think it's it's a pretty interesting thing. This this is a card that I think is like I've never ever seen it used. <laughs> you know what? Fair. I was just thinking that I was like I don't think I've ever had this card in my deck like ever. <laughs> so that's really interesting, but I like it. Mm -hmm. Cool change. So now we're going to casket over here. Ooh, okay. So casket's change is draw i'm sorry cost went from four to three and health went from three to four so just like a small buff do you want to say anything about this one Coulter? wait what oh that's a typo okay i'll have to tweak that what <laughs> um it's supposed to be four cost three four my bad <laughs> so i'll have to just <laughs> friggin correlate with ari sorry my bad about that there was some no type of <laughs> 
This is a meme moment. <laughs> a meme a moment. Three four guard for three is, is a little too insane. So my bad. It's supposed to. Be, it's supposed to be a four cost three four. My bad. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. It's supposed to be a four cost three four. So now everyone will be disappointed. But yeah, I was buffing casket. <laughs> Sorry, my bad. No, screw off. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, that was a mistake. I was debating putting it to like a three cost two two or a four cost three four, and I, I guess I I missed the tweet there. Sorry about that. <laughs> no worries. We will fix this. Perfect. It's okay. Sometimes we have meme moments, which is hilarious. Sorry about that. That was my bad. I'm no, sorry. It's Apologies all everybody. good. It's all good. <laughs> we'll talk to the team and get it all sorted. So we're going to move on <laughs> to the next one. Um, okay, cool. <laughs> I loved your reaction, by the way. That was pretty funny. So Ivy over here, um, she gained guard and also health went down to two. Tell us about this one, Coulter. Yeah, so I tweaked Ivy last week, but it, it was... Um, it... <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> oh, no! I'm embarrassed forever. Don't worry. No. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> We're here no. for the memes. We're here for the memes. <laughs> <laughs> to delete that forever. Um, All right. No worries. Uh, oh, you cut out a uh, little bit. Say it again. Oh, the screen froze. Oh, did it freeze? Are we back? For Are me, we back? Uh, Let me just check. Let me refer. Shoot. Okay, we're just going to sort through some technical difficulties real quick. Okay, there, I think I'm back. Uh, I can okay. see everything again. Awesome. All right. <laughs> I'm uh, changed. Anyway. Let's go. No, that, that's funny. I, uh, that's silly. I will have to get the patch notes fixed. Yeah. No, don't worry about right. that. Yeah. yeah, so Ivy was really powerful even as a 2 3 with Ensnare. So now, similar to Tactician, I made its body subpar because the spell is so powerful. When you get the body with it for free, the body needs to be a little underpowered to compensate for how valuable the uh, mm -hmm. uh, spell is. So this should be fair, I think, also with the toning down of one-cost units. Um, this will help that out by... Uh, oh. or, or the toning down of one-cost units will make this body probably not as bad. Although it still does die to banner, but your opponent will still take some damage. And I was thinking of maybe like a 1-3 as another mm -hmm. option, so we'll have to see how this performs. Cool, yeah. No Sounds aggro cool. rights in this game. Well, we gave <laughs> aggro rights, and now aggro decks are like the entire leaderboard, so <laughs> we'll have to see. Oh, my God. Oh, that's really funny. Okay, let's move to the next one. Ooh, I love this already. Hide Shield is now Soul Shield. That is so fitting. I love the name change. This is like the hey, coolest does this, name. Does this absolve me of my sins? Yes, yes it does. This is so cool. I love yeah, it. it. No it. more hiding. It's my soul. Give me armor soul. Yeah. Go on. So this one was one. I mean, I was waiting for people. I, when I made this, I'm like, this seems really overpowered and no one played it for like, Four months. And then within the past few weeks, people caught on to just how good it was. So, um, yeah, we've uh, nerfed uh, Hide Shield. It no longer hides. It's now Soul Shield. Um, but, yeah. Oh, wow. So this should be a pretty exciting change or just reasonable change to make it a little less OP. Wow. Both stealth and lead gone. Wow. Nice. Love the name, though. It's pretty great. Still saves a good one. Yeah. People are saying it was broken, but it was bro broken because of stealth. Interesting. Yeah, let's mm -hmm. let's see how it goes. Let's see how this yeah, one will it's go. Very, it should be exciting. I could see re-adding lead if it's like unplayable like this, but I think it's still probably pretty good. Yeah, for sure. Okay, cool. <laughs> we <So> did listen. <laughs> we definitely did listen, everyone. So Flashbang over here has changed from death attached blind to a random enemy to death attached blind to a random enemy unit. So now your hero can't get it, huh? So yeah, this is another changed. one of the one drops where it's like in the just strictly better than claw bear territory. So <laughs> it just is another one that's ratcheted down just a notch. So it can no longer no longer burn the enemy's eyes out when it comes to their hero, which makes it less annoying in the early game. Yeah, I hated this this card too, Ofra. It was like really giving me a hard time in every game. So I'm definitely it makes thank the you. random less random. <laughs> Yes, 
Okay, now let's go down to heavy cavalry over here. So we've got three changes. One is a text effect going from summon, draw a metal unit, give it minus one cost, and attach lead to summon, draw a metal unit, give it plus one, plus one, and it has less power by one point, so it went from four to three, and its health went from three to four. So, okay, tell us, this is a cool change. This is this is heavy cavalry, all right, with that health. Yeah, he like... got heavier. Now he's got the three, four stat line to really brawl on the battlefield. Oh my gosh, yeah. Yeah, that's uh, he cool. should actually be heavy and stuff now and be just good. Yeah, so this is one um, that I thought about for a while. Again, the power level of the game has kind of gone up a bit. Um, units are more competitive on curve now. <laughs> My Drake, yeah, it's still <laughs> incidentally <laughs> shoots bacon in the foot, unfortunately. I heard people discussing a number of different things um, with this card, and one of the complaints was that lead would overwrite spells. And it could be that uh, we could still tweak something like if it doesn't have a spell, um, it could uh, give lead, but that's added complexity. And I like the idea of heavy cavalry just strengthening units rather than reducing their cost because it feels more thematic for strength mm -hmm. uh, to buff its units uh, stats rather than their cost down. Cool. Um, yeah, so this this should be a good one. I, I it should it should be pretty neat. I could see you could go into this and some metal spell. I see this actually seeing a lot more play with. Uh, seems very good with crystal cash, which is probably another reason yeah. why tweaking crystal cash was good because. It seems very powerful when combined with that, or if you suit up into this and make it a five six armor for five mana. <laughs> True, true, very true. Oh yeah. my gosh. No, cool. Very cool change here. Very interesting. It's going to be interesting to see how those decks go down in game. Oh, so Fly Guy got a change next. So let's see what that change is. Oh my gosh. Fly Guy got buffed by adding lifesteal, but it has one less power. Wow. Okay, tell us, Coulter, what was the reason for this change? This was a slight tuning down just because Fly Guy was sort of better than stuff like Shade. Um,. I don't think it will make a massive difference because Fly Guy usually mm -hmm. dies, but this gives your opponent a little more flexibility because they no longer have to immediately try to answer it or start getting punched for two a turn. Mm -hmm. uh, Lifesteal is also cute. We took Lifesteal off like um, Trailblazer and whatever, so it was okay to put it here. It doesn't really change much, no, but it's a little tweak to make the card a little weaker so that it doesn't push as much damage if you leave it in play. <laughs> So yeah. it's a little more tactical. And I it just like feels it. better for it to be weaker than Shade, who doesn't have the, like, hexing effect and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So, it, again, this is just a one-drop that was a little above curve. It dealt... It, it like, traded into other one-drops a little too efficiently, mm -hmm. like, even if it didn't die to its own effect. So just nerfing it a bit. Cool. To make it so that it's not as good if you play it after your opponent has played their units and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. It feels more like a mosquito... It's, it's supposed to be themed off an assassin bug, actually, if you've ever oh, cool. seen those in your head. Oh, cool. That's so sick. I love that. <laughs> That's really cool. Yeah. yeah, massive flavor win for sure. And we now... Actually, spoiler and spooky thing, there is a mosquito-type character that we have in the pipeline for the future, and he's super cool. Everyone Ooh, really... Ooh, okay. Our art team really outdid themselves. That's pretty exciting. Thanks for this the little preview, the, the insider knowledge. <laughs> So, wow. oh my gosh. The wisdom dragon. <laughs> <laughs> I just played a game against this card today, and I was like, this card is so strong. And I'm like, oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so we gave it one extra point of health. What was the reasoning for this? Yeah. Um, so again, Am this was just a card that it, the stat showed was not particularly strong. Um, Amaruath is a very good kind of like, it can end games, which is good because it it makes late game strategies more powerful in order yeah it's a small buff <laughs> it's a small buff it makes amara a tiny bit harder to kill um i was debating dropping it to eight cost or something like that but it felt unfair to cards like tiamat uh so we gotta sort of balance that out wait Amaru yeah how do you, I, I, I was saying i was saying Amar, what did I say? I said Amaroth. Amar like, how do you pronounce this? It's a made-up word that I made by smashing different words together. <laughs> it's That's its name. That's cool. Wait, so Amaruath? It's supposed to be like that. Amaruath. Uh, Amaruath. No. Yeah. Amaruath. I was saying Amaruath, like 
Amara. I don't know. Wow, Y'all cool. in the patch after this change. No, we did not. <laughs> there's another. There's another dragon who got buffed, but it's more roundabout. <laughs> okay, and so I, let's go to Glacia before we get into the to the nice tea. Um, health increase from four to five. Did you want to say anything about Glacia or should we keep moving? Uh, just a little buff to another heart underperformer. Again, I was buffing some heart cards and some wisdom cards because they are the lowest ranking prisms. Their win rates are very poor right now. So that's why I'm trying to use data information to sort of uh, shift the meta a bit and try to buff up some underused cards and nerf some overused ones. Yeah. Is everyone trying to guess the dragon right now with the change? Interesting. Okay. I mean, it shouldn't be that hard to guess considering, <laughs> considering there were a bunch of hints like in the picture at the beginning. True, true. Good point, good point. Okay, we'll keep moving on and see what happens. <laughs> we'll just keep going on. <laughs> That's another so, wisdom dragon. I, no, I have, don't I have split. Two, uh... <laughs> Coulter, they'll know. <laughs> Um, it's all good Coulter if, if that, that was one little flavor hint for all of you um, so I, I spider I was gonna say I spy and I'm like I spider all right Ash try to pronounce these properly oh my gosh so now it has barrier mm -hmm. um tell us why the buff here for I spider I spider has also um also been a card that's really I've never really seen around and it the stats reflected that it um the picture is actually just add bacon. It's just just to answer that. The picture usually reflects a card that was tweaked in the patch. That's how we actually work it. Me and Salvatore discuss it, and we always try to pick a picture that was impacted mm -hmm. by the patch. Um, because I secretly like wisdom best, and I've been I've been <gasps> undermining the entire game to push my wisdom agenda <laughs> the whole time. That's so why wisdom has so many dragons. Uh, yeah. So this is a small tweak to an underperformer um, in the stats, which just isn't played that much. Again, I'm interested in making some cards. Generally, what people tend to play is cards that draw into more cards. So I'm aiming to tweak draw down and bump up uh, mm -hmm. some more threats that don't draw cards like Eye Spider. <laughs> mm -hmm. Cool. Cool. Um, so let's go on to Whip Vine. Uh, do you want to say anything about this one? Uh, just a tweak to another one cost unit. Last week when I made it, I said I'd probably tweak it uh, because I thought that a 1-3 guard that rooted all enemy units was a bit strong for a one cost. So now... Um, cool. Now uh, now it's a little weaker on the health side, but it uh, tangles better with... Uh, uh, with uh, it, damn it, things that hit it will be withered. Cool. Nice. So, some re-education look this is the last change of the patch our, our final <gasps> change is up next and it single-handedly brings back an entire deck type so i think that maybe i'll be absolved Ooh, of <laughs> okay tell us colter go on tell us so this, this was one necrotic pact was one that uh needed to have its text refitted a bit and i could have just removed guard but um this is a change that harkens back to an ancient uh, deck type that was a lot of fun, an ancient late game strategy that Heart and specifically Heart Intellect could use, wherein you could chain Undragons together using Necrotic Pact to have one Undragon revive the other Undragons. Uh, and I thought the game has changed so much since that was a thing, but let's give that thing one last hurrah and see if it's balanced in this meta. Uh, so this could go back and we could change it to fate and maybe drop it to two cost or something. But this is a kind of interesting sort of deck type that City can use. And you can basically chain Undragons together. <laughs> this is a nerf. Don't let it fool. Well, yes, it also reduces some incremental draw because it prevents you from just getting an automatic fate guard on all your stuff. But what it does let you do is you can... A necrotic pack back something like Vishiva and use her raise arms to make more mummies. Or you can necrotic pack something like Amaruath and use its earth spike. Or you can necrotic pack back a uh, unit you know, with a draw spell and draw some cards. Um, nice. Or you can chain together undragons in order to uh, summon like three undragons in one turn. 
the ability to reuse certain spells is particularly powerful. Maybe less so now that um, on Fallow or uh, Evermore took over a lot, but this used to be a really terrifying card, and so I wanted to try to bring this back. I could see also they summon your highest cost dead, you know its element, and give it guard, but the fact that it doesn't give fate um, is a pretty interesting thing because cool. it's it's one of the few revival spells that lets you reuse spells. Mm -hmm. Are we looking at Necrotic Pact or Undragon? Well, Endragon and Necrotic Pact are basically usually one and the same because no one runs main deck Necrotic Pact. But Necrotic Pact, um, I think this is a pretty interesting change because it allows you to run the Undragon a bit combo again where you can copy Undragons and then summon multiple Undragons back in the same turn, which is a very kind of interesting late game heart strategy. A dang element. Who's manning Skyweaver live right now? Is that Ari? No, it's is Ari manning it. <laughs> dang element. That's amazing. Um, sweet. Is there anything else you want to say about this patch, Coulter, at all? Like, just any final thoughts? Skyweaver live suggested it's not Marcelo. Okay, well, that's good to know. <laughs> um, yeah, I I know that this patch was perhaps a bit contentious. Um, I wanted to implement some of the new information that we have and try to make some tweaks to the meta. Um, so I hope that you'll all uh, just give it a chance. I think that the changes to agility in many cases won't be as devastating as you think they might be. I'm just looking to make it a little less efficient at removing things. Uh, again, like things like Hot Dog and Run Wild still push the same amount of damage initially. It's just a little less flexible. So reducing the flexibility of agility a tiny bit. And I mean, you can also play those cards. They can now gain banner from another source so you can get the benefit and the banner onto them. So there's there are options. I'm not saying that it's a strict buff to these cards or that it's even like a fair trade, but the, the point is to try to tone down agility a little. I've kind of said it before that I, I like aggro decks. They're an important part of the game. But when aggro is the most powerful strategy, the entire game, or like when it's number one and it's significantly above other things, it means that creativity in, is stifled because every deck has to immediately pass the bar of not dying on like turn five. So it's just a bit harsh. But mm -hmm. yeah, uh, Gemini was one I was considering. But again, I looked at sort of Banjo, Aggro, and stuff, and it wasn't that high up on the list. But Gemini will definitely be one that's looked at. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. Well, on, in that case, that is a wrap of this week's patch. Um, I hope you all enjoyed it. Let's, let us know what you think in the patch discussion in our Discord. If anyone new here is watching, skyweaver.chat is where you can join our Discord. But yeah, that's all we got for today. No, sir. No bacon. Sorry. <laughs> this is what we got. It'll be fine. We'll be great. The meta is going to be very interesting. We'll be watching. So let us know. Keep giving us your feedback. Keep reporting anything funny or funky that you come across. And all is well in the Skyweaver universe and hopefully in yours as well. So we will see you in game then. All right. I'm going to scroll super fast to the top and end it right here. Thanks, everybody. Bye.